Today we're talking about two Fast AF trucks, possible return for the Toyota Celica. Huh? That's right, we also have a very special guest with a name that rhymes with Jay Leno. But first, call Caldwell Banker, because a for sale sign just popped up at Willow Springs. Welcome to the big three. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get my checkbook out right now. A big old check. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What do you think? Call it a uh, couple hundred bucks. Couple yeah, hundred. it's a, it's it's a, a desert it's property. A write off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the big three, everybody. My name is Nolan Sykes. With me, it's Joe Weber. I ain't no goddamn son of a bitch. <laughs> and. Max Maddox, what's up? You better think about it, baby. <laughs> did you guys see Misfits or something? Yeah, we yeah. did. Oh, <laughs> saw that this weekend. We saw the original lit Misfits lineup, which was uh, with Danzig, with Glenn. Yeah, wow. everyone Big was there. Very Glenn. cool. Yeah, yeah uh, Doyle von Frankenstein was ripping up. I don't think he's part of the original lineup, but no. he's uh, he was a roadie though yeah. for the original band. When he was and like then, fifteen. I know yeah. too much about the Misfits, yeah, no. but. I had a bad time in the pit too. Yeah. Yeah. I got pushed over twice and my glasses got knocked off oh, my sure. face and I had to like reach down and pick them up. Did you know that um, Christina, our producer and now head of creative, is an enforcer, a pit enforcer? No. Oh. She's on the she edge. She goes with on the, the arm edge. Out. She mm. gets the arm out and she <laughs> gets people moving. Well, she's she like, pretty hardcore about it. Hell yeah. yeah. Awesome. What cool. did you, you did Vegas this weekend? I am. Kind of recovering still from Vegas. I did not get like wasted really, but I uh, just really took it out of me. I didn't get any sleep on Friday night. Saturday, we were at the pool all day. Just soup. It was like 106 degrees. Oh, man. And you're at that I'm triple decker strip club, too. There might have been some, <laughs> some activities going down. Yeah. No, it was a good time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then yesterday, we drove home. I'm just like out of We stopped at Eddie's World. What's on that? The way. It's like this giant. It's like a candy store. It's like a it's like a Bucky's, but they only they sell like a lot of candy and jerky, like a lot of candy, a lot of candy. I have like half a pound of gummies in my <laughs> wow. body right now, still. So, man. Anyway, <laughs> well, you, yeah. seem, you seem <laughs> fit to host a podcast. Right I'm, now. I'm feeling it, man. It's feeling good. Okay, so let's talk about uh, some IndyCar. Yeah. yeah. So Andretti driver. Jamie Chadwick became the first woman ever to win an IndyCar next race at a road course. Very exciting That's stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, she qualified on pole and led all 20 laps at Road America. That's even Sick. cooler. She's the first woman to race in the series in 13 years and is the only, the third woman all time to win an Indy next race. What is Indy next? It's like a, a feeder series for IndyCar. Cool. Uh, a lot of younger drivers. Um, Jamie oh, Chadwick. I get it next. Yeah, she, Jamie Chadwick is a multi champion of the W series, which is over in uh, Europe. That was kind of like a, um, a, a women only series meant to highlight, obviously, female drivers, but also maybe get them exposure and uh, uh, a chance to maybe get into maybe Formula Two or Formula One. Uh, Jamie decided to come over to the US, try her hand at IndyCar. It's working out pretty well. She's been having some good results, uh, but this is. Her first win, pretty uh, cool. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, we've worked with her before on Dirt oh. Five. She was also in oh. the game. Oh. We got to have a little like transatlantic phone call VO session. She was over at a studio in Britain while we were over here in. Uh, oh, dude, I bet Burbank that. Or, I bet that yeah. scripted banter was pretty great. <laughs> it was great, Joe. Did, yeah. Joe it was did, great. Did you write the scripted banter for that? Uh, I uh, uncredited. Yes, some of it. Um, James needed a bunch of like James isms for it. And so I was in one of the writers meetings. Yep. Pitching on that. Anyway, enough, uh, behind the scenes for a game that came out four years ago. <laughs> Congratulations to Jamie. Hell yeah, uh, Jamie. Very cool. This next story, this might. It's close to home. It's close to home. Literally change the way. I mean, depending on who buys this thing might change the way we do videos. And every and, every West Coast automotive creator, for that matter. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. If you're in LA and you make videos about cars, this news affects you. Last Thursday, the owners of Willow Springs announced that the fastest road in the West was officially for sale. Ah, this is scary. That's right. So if you play racing games or watch our channel, you've seen this track dozens of times, literally dozens. But for those of you unfamiliar with the track somehow, uh, this place is a complex with numerous tracks located in the high desert north of L.A. 
So you got Big Willow, which is maybe the most famous one. Yeah. That's the oldest track, track there. Uh, that's, you know, Carol Shelby tested his cars mm-hmm. there. Everybody tested their cars there. Then you got Horse Thief, which is more of like a drifting track. They it's only like for a, drifting. It's got a lot of al- elevation it's changes. It's got crazy elevation change. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's only like a mile long. That's the only one I've ever driven. Uh, really? With, with like speed ventures and stuff. I've never actually done Big Willow. I've never done Big Willow either, but... Uh, uh, then you got Streets of Willow, which is what we film at. No, at, I'm, I'm. That was the one. That yeah, I've I was done. like, you, yeah, Devin. I've done Horse Thief and okay, Streets. Yeah, so yeah, Streets is where you. That's where we're setting our lap times. For yeah, that's video. like a two mile course. It's pretty narrow. Not like it's not great for passing, like Big Willow is, but it's very technical. And like a car, like a a well set up Civic, for example, can beat. A, a C8 Corvette. Yeah. If the driver in the Civic is mm-hmm. much better than the the Corvette driver. I drove in a not so well set up Civic. It was just a stock Civic. Yeah, you had just stock Civic. <laughs> and I couldn't the bowl on the back. Mm-hmm. I could. It kept getting bogged down because of traction control. Mm. Couldn't figure out how to turn off traction control where it would let me just rip through that bowl. I love Streets of Willow. It's one of my favorite tracks. Uh, There's also a cart track on the facility. There's a skid pad uh, and a dirt oval. I did not know that. Nor did I. Uh, And also an area for autocross. I think that would also be on the skid pad up top. The skid pad we're talking about. That's the balcony. That's also a very famous like grassroots kind of drift area. A lot of teams will, a lot of FD teams will test there. Um, uh, Adam Kanapik goes there all the time. Like the balcony in the SoCal drift scene, that's like a mainstay of the of the scene down here yeah and it so, could all be yours yeah all that could <laughs> be yours that's right max what i'm worried about is uh some a bunch of rich guys buying this and turning it into their private playground because it is so accessible right now it's an hour and a half outside of the city mm-hmm. uh you could drive your track car there mm-hmm. uh go rip around and then come back within the same day and it's just like good vibes right now i don't want that to get lost yeah it feels very old school you know um i mean the big willow layout is the same it's been for decades um you get to the uh the track and like the facilities some of the main buildings are like pretty nice the like the facilities are good but it still kind of has a very um old school feel to it yeah uh there's not a lot of barriers for the tracks um there's not a lot of like the curbs are like pretty uh uh worn away um it still feels like it's just straight out of the 60s it's it's a really cool vibe yeah um it could probably do with some upgrades i think maybe some new bleachers give the whole place a fresh coat of paint a little bit it feels it feels good it feels uh I love going there. Yeah. And we go there. We go there. I think the real lot. fear is like, yeah, okay, somebody buys it, keeps it a track. That's great. Mm-hmm. What if they just turn into a bunch of upscale luxury condos? I you know. know. What if they gentrify Willow Springs? I know. That's, but at the I'm same really time, yeah, there, I don't think Rosamond is the place to build that because, like, the track itself is pretty far outside it's of out town. There. I don't know. People drive to Thermal. Like, <laughs> what the hell's in Thermal? Well, there's lots of, well, it's near Palm Springs. Mm. And it's very uh there's a lesson. Yeah, that's like, that. like a that was purpose built to be a a luxury. People have their have their mansions there. Yeah. Next to the track. I think Rose uh, sure there is definitely risk of that, but it's not a situation like uh Auto Club Speedway in Fontana that's currently going under like they sold some of that property to be built up as apartments. They're gonna make the track smaller. I don't necessarily think it's a similar situation here. Because at the end of the day, it's it really is out in the middle of the desert, mm-hmm. out in the middle of nowhere. Lancaster's nearby. That's a pretty big city. Yeah, um, you got uh, what is it, Lockheed Martin's out there? Yeah, Lockheed so you Martin. A there's of- a a base out there. Is it uh, Edwards? Is it Edwards that's out there? Um, there's an Air Force base out there. You got Lockheed Martin, big manufacturer, obviously a big uh, driver of the economy out there. But I think if you're gonna build, if you're gonna build housing. It would make more sense, at least, for it to be Palmdale or Lancaster, where there is still land, but it's closer to where those facilities are rather than yeah. Rosamond. The people that are selling it uh, say that it's 55% cheaper to rent the track than at comparable tracks. So the people that are selling it, obviously, like mm-hmm. are in it for the racing. Uh, I just hope whoever like buys it kind of keeps that same mentality and wants to do it for the racing and not just kind of turn it into their playhouse 
I think you'd lose money if you did that. You know, I mean, this racetracks yeah. only stay up. There's no mansions. You could, you could still to supplement up the, the track income. rates a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, to have your own private, you'd have to like jack. You would kill it basically if you did yeah. that. I think like. Well, what if what if you sell like personalized bollards <laughs> for ten thousand dollars each, and you can have. You know, like your name painted on a curb. That's like I don't when know. they put the when during COVID when, with baseball games, they would put people in the audience. Yeah, yeah, I and you know. had to pay a bunch <laughs> to get your like your cut out put in the stands. I don't know. I think it's a interesting. Um, like that came out of nowhere too. It was like on Friday, yeah. right? It got announced mm -hmm. that this was up for sale, and now it's already. Uh, I mean, it's spooling up. You know the comp the competition. We can Who's do a little timeshare deal. Like every, we get our audience to give us like, know, give like 10, 20 bucks. Like you get a percentage of it, and we can all do this big uh, communal racetrack. Yeah, we'll we'll have your name go by in the end credits really quickly. <laughs> it would make so much sense. Like how Hoonigan had the the burn yard at Irwindale, Irwindale yeah. have some sort of thing like that where you just have like your a uh, uh, a steady stream of your own fans coming to the track all yeah. the time to a weekly or monthly event. Bring in the awesome. revenue. I don't know. It's a tough thing. Like I obviously am not qualified to speak on how to run a racetrack. So I think good business to me. No. Yeah, I, I think you could also offer services, kind of like the theater that we did our live show in, uh, built-in production for it too. So if you want mm. like a a really cool video of your car going around the track from multiple angles, hmm. you could set up like cameras and have that kind of just be a package that you buy. Interesting too, because everyone wants the clips for IG for uh, Blue Sky. <laughs> Everyone's wonder, on Blue Sky right now, right? <laughs> in Vegas, driving you know driving home from Vegas, I passed by uh, Speed Vegas, which I have still yet to mm -hmm. do. But I, I was thinking about that's it. the one where you can rent the supercar. Yeah, to drive maybe something like that on the premises makes sense too. That's There's cool. a few different driving schools that are surround like on the or nearby big willow um that have facilities like either on the property that they rent or like right literally right outside the property line but having some like marquee kind of like business like that again it's like really far outside la though. i don't think it's a i don't think distance is as big of a factor as you think you build a hotel I, you could build i think a hotel, a hotel actually would, nice. would make sense car hotel, yeah, a car yeah, centric hotel stuff to do yeah with all like car beds <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Any drink out of like little car cups. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to keep an eye on this story. Keep you guys updated uh, on who's who's going to buy this thing. Who's going to keep it alive? Who's going to uh, take the next swing at bat? Or who's you know? going to kill it? Last week, Toyota's own news outlet, Toyota Times, reported that company chairman Akio Toyota revealed that he, quote, put in a request to bring the Celica back last year. Now, most auto news outlets believe a new Celica would be a direct rival to Honda's upcoming sports coupe, the Prelude. A sports coupe is like loose wording of it. They said it's not going to be fast. Yeah. It's like a little hybrid two-seater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the second time in a few weeks that a rumor like this has come out of Toyota. You guys might remember the S. FR announcement from a few episodes ago. Yeah, like you said, Joe, I don't know... I mean, if it's a, I, I, how sporty is the Celica going to be if it's going against something like the Prelude, which is, yeah, when you look at the specs, not exactly super duper. And I'm, I'm sure it's also going to be like a hybrid kind of very base level economy car, yeah. but which maybe, is not a bad thing. Yeah. Like hybrids are fast. Some I, hybrids are fast. Some hybrids are fast. Ever heard of the 918, dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's a good idea to do it if it's competing with the Prelude. Uh, the bar is low. Uh, well, we don't know that. <laughs> well, then you know I'm going. The prelude off of what, looks sick. It looks. It sick. looks really I love cool. It. If it look, if the Celica looks sick, I don't like the early 2000s. That yeah. redesign was pretty the bad. Celica GT. Yeah. Oh, but, dude, the all track one with the, the no 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 that's the, the 90s one. The 90s one. Oh, I'm yeah, talking yeah, the yeah. 2000s so one. Like, yeah, 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 The straight up like Need for Speed Most Wanted one. Yeah. You know. They, you could get one with a huge wing, though. With so, that body kit, that was pretty cool. I mean, I, cool. is there a spicy version in the works for this? This is just rumors this at this point. This is all rumors, dude. But um, Best Car actually reported that Toyota was working on a 400-horsepower 2-liter turbo inline 4. Cool. Which could be in it. Uh, this is still speculation at this point. <laughs> that would be uh, insane. But that, yeah. 400 horsepower out of a 2-liter. That's sick. Yeah. So this wow. would be kind of directly... If it is 400 horsepower, that would be more than the GR Corolla. Mm -hmm. um, it's too close to the GR Corolla 
to actually become a reality. I don't know if the Celica name brand is that strong enough that they want to like I think bring it back. For me, this is and I'm, of course I'm extremely biased because I'm a freak nerd, but like if they brought back some <laughs> styling that looked like the 90s one yeah, with the quad the four, headlights. Yeah. Uh well, yeah, a little smaller like two door fastback kind of yeah. coupe looking thing. I think that could work for me. Yeah, I'm thinking like the styling that Hyundai's doing right now with the Ionic 5, that kind of throwback mm -hmm. retro futurism thing. Yeah. Maybe that could work with the Celica. Something like that, maybe. Yeah. I, but you know. see, like, I think that kind of styling is what the Celica was in the early 2000s, where no, they're like, no, oh, this looks futuristic. No, no, no. That was just like, it was just like pure, I think, just style of the time. I don't think like they were going for a retro play like that. It looked nothing like the other previous cars even yeah. like the vintage ones from like the 70s um but i mean toyota already has kind of like a a retro styling kit going on right now with the land cruiser mm, um yeah you know i dude th those have gone on sale now i saw three of them this weekend hmm. and a new one i saw another a blue one sorry not a new one i saw a blue one this morning and like they are i think people like the retro I think they're and I yeah. think that's a cool they're little cool. kick. Dude, I'm seeing cyber trucks like every day now. Yeah. Well, that's because we live in LA. Yeah. I only saw one cyber truck in Vegas. Mm. And that was one you could win. Well, <laughs> yeah. Cool. So they're like, please take this off my yeah. hands. Yeah. So I don't know. Quad headlights, Toyota, do it. I think it's cool that Toyota has their own newspaper called the Toyota Times. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you that. do? I mean, I feel like maybe they're <laughs> controlling the narrative a little bit. But I like the idea of it, you know? Toyota is so great and introspective. <laughs> <laughs> so a new rally-inspired all-wheel drive Celica is just a rumor for now, but there's plenty of here and now excitement in the world of all-wheel drive race cars this week. That's right. Ford recently unveiled an insane new EV demonstrator dubbed the Lightning Super Truck. Nice. Fuck yeah, dude. Ford plans to take the truck to Pikes Peak for the upcoming hill climb time attack on June 23rd. This thing is based on the same tech as the Super Van. Uh, you guys might remember from episode two that crushed several records at Bathurst. All right. Uh, let's, this, let's describe this image for yeah. our audio listeners do here. you guys remember hot wheel the hot wheels animated series it was like super racers or something like that this reminds me of that mm, it's pretty outlandish that. it's got a giant wing on the rear look at the well, diffuser yeah. the diffuser looks like a big shell hanging off the back yeah that's like a three foot tall diffuser this the might be the most ridiculous car i've ever seen in my life guys. <laughs> what the hell the, if, okay. the wing looks like a sign that would be in an Holy f1 shit. race so I actually love this because Pikes Peak's cars, Pikes Peak, Pikes Peak cars, excuse me. Um, there's a long tradition of insane aero like this, like yeah. having it an enormous wing. Mm -hmm. That front splitter has got to be like three feet wider than the truck it's itself. It's insane. So I love that they actually went all in on this instead of just like making a really spicy F-150 uh, with no aero at all or anything like that. This is really, yeah. really sick. So Being a pickup truck on slicks is just sick. At 150 miles per hour, this thing produces nearly 6,000 pounds Damn. of downforce. What? Does it need that much? I mean, that's wild. I mean, the truck itself weighs about mm -hmm. 6,000 pounds. Yeah, so, so it's just, they're trying to offset it so it doesn't fly up in the air and become a lightning plane. I don't know enough about aerodynamics to to dispute that, but I think that sounds correct enough. Let's just Joe. go with it. <laughs> yeah. It's expected, the truck is expected to make nearly 2,000 horsepower. Damn. And yeah, it looks like something your little cousin would make out of Legos. You yeah. I bet you want to daily drive this so bad, Nolan. Me? Mm-hmm. Right, not today. I'm just feeling, I'm just down today. <laughs> this is you know, like low this energy. Is, this is definitely for you freak nerd types. This is a freak nerd car, certified freak, yeah. seven days a week. Car and I feel right like here. Ford kind of leans into that kind of stuff. Like the super van is just like, why, why did you do yeah. that? But also super cool. Obviously, this thing will not be for sale. Uh, but I, like, you wouldn't want to sit in traffic with a three foot diffuser. Would you anyway. rather have this truck or Willow Springs? Oh, Willow Springs. Yeah. 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 I don't know. When the Willow Springs news dropped in our in our Slack, uh, which some people gave us, we mentioned Slack a few weeks ago, and people in the comments were like, you guys are weird for using Slack and not Google Teams. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. Why? You have yeah. a strong enough opinion on... Anyway, <laughs> in our Slack, 
Uh, <laughs> someone mentioned that we should buy this and relocate the office. And I was honestly thinking like, yeah, I would, I would move to, I, we could all afford a house in Rosamond. Do we yeah. want to live there though? It gets hot. Yeah. There's a pretty bang in 7-Eleven there though. Well, we I've, just got to build that hotel and yeah. get the car beds going. Get those car cups yeah. you were talking about. We're having a good time. Yeah. And then all the food comes on a little RC car being dragged to your table. That's the other thing. There's one restaurant in Rosamond that we go mm -hmm. to for when yeah. we're at the track. It's uh, I forget what it's called. It's a claim pizza. jumper or something? It, no. <laughs> we do go to claim jumper in Lancaster. So. It's, oh, okay. it's like a taco place. I don't remember what they're called. We get it every time we're at the track. Yeah. Well, you usually go to this pizza place, the hangar. Mm. A uh, shout out to the hangar. hangar. You guys got some really dense pizzas. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> <Very dense>. uh, <laughs> the best thing to eat in the hot desert is like a really a dense pizza. Melty calzone. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> we joke, but that's the move. Okay. So it's too bad that we can't buy this F-150. Uh, but I guess if we want a fast truck, we'll just have to settle for a truck with only 1,000 25 horsepower. Oh, Max. shoot. I guess so. So, a 1,025 horsepower truck I can buy, you ask? That's right. Last week, Rivian dropped a brand new quad motor version of its R1T that cranks out over 1,000 horsepower and nearly 1,200 foot pounds of torque. That's wow. right. This is the second gen R1 platform. They made a bunch of changes. Uh, I don't think it's a clean sheet redesign, but no. they made a ton of revisions to their second gen truck. So, Let's talk about it. Zero to 60 is expected to be under two and a half seconds with this 1,025 horsepower version. Yeah. Pricing has yet to be revealed, but it's 850 horsepower. Tri-motor sibling will start at <laughs> 107,700 bucks. So we're Good we're Lord. talking maybe a $130,000 truck. Before the that markups sounds and about everything. Right. Yeah. yeah. Look. It'll dude, still sell. Yeah. Yeah. People in West LA love these things. I mean, people I see are these spending things all the time. People are spending 300k on people, the the Hummer EV when that came out. So yeah, yeah. people. How do people afford this? this? What do they do? Like, what do they do? Uh, Next time I see someone, if I'm in like, uh, I guess I would have to go to Erewhon or something to like mm -hmm. ask them this. But like, mm -hmm. I want to ask them what they do. Hey, what do you do for a living? Hey, what uh, do you do? I actually embezzled a bunch from PPP loans. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, a lot of people did that I, shit. Yeah, no, I, I know. That's why it's funny. Like, yeah. Oh, man. Like, so when I bought my truck, like, after spending the money, it was it was a $28,000 yeah. transaction. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. That's a dent. That was, yeah, that was a lot. Yeah. And then it's, I see people driving stuff like this. I'm like, how do you do this? I know. There's a. You know what my biggest I, I regret is? I just don't is? understand. Not investing in commercial real estate in Los Angeles in the 1980s. <laughs> So anyway, I guess that's how yeah. we'll get to that uh, the this new Rivian here. But anyways, mm -hmm. I I love the Rivian when we got the Rivian truck a couple years ago. I had so yeah. much fun in it, and it felt you know like the difference between driving in that truck and driving the Cybertruck. I don't know how to put my finger on it, but like it felt like the Rivian had been tested, and it mm -hmm. felt like the Cybertruck had not been tested. Yeah, like there's just like things that. Nothing went wrong with the Rivian. Like the air suspension was great. The the um, zero to sixty was like mm -hmm. as advertised. It just felt like a complete car mm -hmm. versus the Cybertruck, which was like, uh, you know, like a very expensive high school shop project. Mm. I agree, hundred percent, Joe. Yeah, I like Rivian. Good for them. Speaking of real estate, you know who has some really great real estate up in Burbank? Who? Uh, Mr. Jay Leno. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you say we go there now? All right. Whoa. <laughs> Nolan, you look different. Oh, yeah. Well, these special effects are unbelievable, isn't it? This AI <laughs> is just incredible. <laughs> Jay, thank you so much for joining the big three this week. No problem, uh, This is a dream for us to be able to interview you. Well, in it's a garage. nightmare for me, but thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> One man's dream, another man's nightmare. <laughs> um, Jay, I don't know if you realize, but you uh, you had a cameo in one of our recent videos where we joined a PT Cruiser club. No, oh, I didn't know that, but I will have my attorney get on that right away. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we brought our PT Cruiser to the Spring Fling and you showed up in a, a tank car. Right. Oh, yeah, the yeah. car. The Mopar. Well, that was built by Chrysler, so it, it was technically a Mopar. <laughs> Wild. Yeah. Um, 
I know that the spring fling, uh, and this is, you know, the Mopar annual car event right. is something that you frequent uh, pretty regularly. Well, actually, I frequent almost every car event, so it's not That's like, awesome yeah. that you still That's interesting. Are there any, much. like, you know, because you have so many uh, different car communities that you interact with, I'm curious um, if any stand out as the most interesting communities to be around. Well, they're all interesting to me. You know, I, I like all kinds of vehicles. I'm not so much... Radwood, that whole thing is sort of new to me because oh, okay. at my age, those are just used cars. Sure. You know? <laughs> yeah. So to me, it's like, oh, a car from the 90s. That's like <laughs> last Thursday to me. So <laughs> it, it, it doesn't seem that unusual. But, but I do find it fascinating. And it's interesting what each generation will consider collectively. You know, like when I was doing The Tonight Show, we had a kid who said to me, uh, oh, Miss Lally, car, I like cars too. I said, do you have any collector cars? He goes, oh, yeah. yeah. I said, what do you got? He goes, a uh, Miata. <laughs> and I went, and I realized, well, he was 21. It was, that car was out before he was born. <laughs> so it was like, oh, okay, that would be, to me, that's yeah. just, that's a nice car, but it, it's, but to him, it's, it's fairly recent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right, to him, it's, it's just Model traffic. T's, Model A's. All yeah. Right. yeah. Well, I noticed you have a Miata back there. I do. I, I'm not a snob. I, that's probably the greatest sports car. I think that gets, that leads to Porsches and Ferraris. And, Absolutely. You know, because yeah. you drive one of those and then you want something maybe a little more upscale than you go, you go to your Porsche or Ferrari or yeah. Mercedes, whatever it might be. Our first guest on the big three, we just started this podcast, by the way, a couple of months ago. Our first guest was Bob Hall, okay. the designer or not designer, the, the creator, in, creator of the, yeah, of the, the Miata. Yeah, right, right, he, right. He kind of detests that designer label. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he was a journalist. Well, that, I know, I yeah. know him. So I, I talked to him years ago too. Mm -hmm. And you realize, the Miata is what Lotus really should have been. The Miata is a copy of a Lotus Elan. And if, you know, the English build one of anything great. They build one and they go, it's perfect. And then you go, we need two more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, 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 they can't seem to mass produce. And they have a, it's like when the Mini came out, when Isagonis designed the Mini, he hated radios and cars. So he refused to put them in cars. So when you bought a Mini initially, <laughs> it didn't come with any kind of sound system. So it made a huge aftermarket, you know, yeah. of the sound system. But, you know, they're just, just, they're just sort of funny that way. Um, they don't, even when you watch English TV shows, they do like four episodes a year. Woo, we're exhausted. <laughs> you know, America, you do 22 episodes. Yeah, the original episodes. Office was like, yeah. they were burnt out after two seasons. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and, and their seasons are like six shows. Yeah, you it's know, frustrating. So, and it's the same thing with the automobiles, the Japanese when I say copy the English, I don't mean they stole it. It's just, oh, there's a good idea. How can we approve upon it? I mean, the Miata, it's twin cam, five speed. I mean, everything yeah. a Lotus was, but just a bit more precision, uh, getting the price point down a little cheaper, yeah. you know, because a Lotus Elan was the same price as a Corvette in America. What, a big V8? Wild. Or a little four cylinder. Well, they couldn't go V8, you know. Yeah. So, but the fact that they can make like, they're so clever with the Miata. Like the latest Miata is not quite as light as the first one, but most cars as they progress get fatter and bigger and wider. And let's put four doors on it in case the kids want to go. Okay, let's put a back seat. And then it's it's not a sports car anymore. When you look at a Mini now, it's like an American in 1960. He weighs 130. Now he weighs 210, you know. And the belt <laughs> line starts going up. Yeah, the belt yeah. line gets wider. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm curious too, you know, on that note, a lot of uh, performance uh, marquees like uh, the Mustang and now the Corvette and possibly the Camaro now are becoming uh, nameplates that are going to feature four-door vehicles. Yeah, or become an EV. Well, and it's interesting its because to my generation, two-door, convertible was the way to go. And then you got a coupe because you lived in New England or something. Okay, it's still kind of sporty. Uh, <laughs> Like when I talk to people 30 and under, a four-door charger with the big Hellcat motor uh, is actually better for them than the two-door because they can get in the back. And you mm -hmm. go, yeah, you're right. It, it, but it just doesn't. See, to me, the, the four-door always meant family car, station way, or whatever yeah. it might be. So to people from my generation, big coupes. But big coupes are not particularly popular anymore because they're not as practical. Sure. That's and true. so there's a more practical mentality now. And now you have cars like the Urus and these SUVs, which, which are essentially sports cars. They do everything. Yeah. Because I come from there when station wagon to haul stuff, four door to go to the store, take the kids to school, two door, ooh, go out, have fun, get a sporty dad, you know, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So 
Um, speaking of your generation, what did you think of like in the early 2000s, the retro futurism uh, reboot of, you know, like the Chrysler Crossfire and oh, I think it's the, great. The, the I mean, it, it's all progress. You know, it's a bit like music. Yeah. Uh, for years, rap was not recognized in the same way rock and roll was not recognized. You know, in, in the, in the early fifties, they didn't give Grammys to rock and roll artists yeah. because that was like kids music or what they used to call one race music, you know, like oh, wow. Negro music. That was, that, that was a whole separate category yeah. because that's all. That ridiculousness. It had to earn legitimacy. Yeah, had to earn legitimacy. It's all still music, but I know rock and roll guys that hate rap, and I rap guys that hate rock and roll. Absolutely. But I think if you like music, it's the same thing with automobiles. I I get it. I mean, I I like all sides. Like people get mad at me. You know, you had another EV on your show. I'm not watching Jalen's Garage anymore. <laughs> well, okay, then don't watch. But next week, we'll have a gas car. We'll have something you might like. Yeah, not- you can't do the same thing every week. And to me, I think the EV will eventually be the savior of cars like this because, well, these classic cars, uh, they do use more gas and they pollute. Okay. But their percentage gets smaller and smaller. Okay, so if everybody's driving an EV, there's not so much pressure to get our gas cars off the road. So I actually consider it a, a good thing. Wow. Yeah. So the Charger EV, for example, you're a fan? I haven't seen it yet. Let's see what it does. I mean, sure. again, it still has to perform as a car. Yeah. You know, I bought the Tesla because, not because I'm saving the planet, although that's a nice alternative, I suppose, <laughs> mm-hmm. but because it was the fastest accelerating car Absolutely. you could get. I mean, yeah. It's faster than the Bugatti Chiron. I mean, it's amazing it how fast crazy. it is. But I've also got the Demon 170. Yeah. Which, you know, which is like your, your your sister's big, dumb boyfriend, uh, <laughs> football playing boyfriend. You know, so <laughs> it's like a big lineman crashes into things. It's a jog but, mobile. But to race that against the plaid, the plaid just go like this, step it down, you go. Yep. It, 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 it's like a rocket. Beat the plaid with the 170. Got a thing, put on a thing, put on the chiller, kind of yeah. traction control, line lock. I'm, but okay, but this time the light is turned green, the guy blew your door. <laughs> you no, know, but it, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. So on that note, mm-hmm. you drove a Chevy Bolt for a while. A Volt. A Volt, Volt. Sorry, Volt. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great car. I still think that's the future. You know, there's been a lot of pull, pushback on EVs now because. Oh, winter came and suddenly everybody's mileage dropped thirty mm. percent. If you lived in Minnesota, we experienced that with the Cybertruck a little bit. In the okay, mountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with, with a hybrid, you get the best of both worlds. Like we had a Chevy Volt here. Chevy lent it to us. We had it for seven years. We put something like ninety-three thousand miles on it. Only thirty-eight hundred of it was gas. Wow. Oh wow. We would fill it up every December seventh. Not, not for any memorial reason or anything it's just oh, it's <laughs> pearl harbor day. But, but just because every pearl harbor day every, every pearl harbor day. <laughs> not because it's pearl harbor just because it just fell on that day yeah it just became sort of a joke but the idea was the brilliance about the <laughs> chevy volta was when the gas began to turn which means sort of loses volatility mm-hmm. yeah it would automatically turn on the gas engine over the electric engine oh so that's when it would set so when we used up that tank of gas we you know now the Chevy Volt only went forty miles on a charge. Yeah, but for here, we'd run an errand, you know, twenty-two miles, thirty miles, bring it back, plug it in, work on something else. Two hours later, or oh, run another errand. Oh, okay. Well, now you're getting another eighteen mile. Okay, so we put hardly any wear and tear on the gas engine at all. Yeah, that's awesome. If yeah. you're just going to Bob's Big Boy, yeah, and back, yeah. why not? And and uh, as a hybrid, it worked brilliantly. I, I I was sort of sad to see that go. I thought it was a pretty cool car, pretty nice car. Yeah. I have a couple friends with the Volt and I was convinced, you know, I did was skeptical at first, but uh, if you're in a city and you're just commuting, why yeah, not? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because there are people who like cars that are not car people. So you've got to appeal sure. to them yeah. too, you know. I'm curious, Jay, you know, I know, speaking of You're Tesla's- a curious guy. I'm like, I have a lot of <laughs> curiosities lot of questions, huh? that I'd like to extract <laughs> from you. Cheshire cat. <laughs> um, I'm dying to know. Yeah. Um, so you drive a Tesla, and I know that you've uh, you've driven the Tesla semi-truck, and you've you've been sort of, uh, I don't know, I suppose had some brand affinity towards them. Um, do you have any thoughts about, I guess, Elon Musk's reputation right now. I think Tesla's having build quality issues. They're sort of in a little bit of a, I don't well, want to say tumultuous it's, it's period. It's like every time an electric car catches fire, it is a huge story. Yeah. Gas cars catch fire 
10 times more often. When a gas car catches fire, you have an explosion. Yeah. When an electric car catches fire, you go, hey, what's that burning smell? All right, get out. Okay. And then the heat smolders in there. And it will burn, mm -hmm. but it doesn't blow up. It doesn't come apart. It does okay. burn for like days on end. It, it, okay. Yeah. That, that's true. But I mean, now they're learning how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. You know, most have a big, you know, kill switch under the hood. And also they, they have chemicals, fire, uh, fire trucks carry to pull out ele electrical fires. But I mean, the real genius of Elon, you know, Elon came here in 2007 with his prototype Roadster. Mm -hmm. And I drove it. I think it's pretty cool. And he says, you know, Jay, I'm going to build charging stations all up and down the coast. So people can charge for free. I'm going, yeah, right. That'll happen. <laughs> but, you know, it did happen because as he was building that car, even before he built that car, he, he was acquiring land and, and places to put these charging stations. I, I see no other manufacturer. Everybody else who builds an electric car, where mm. do I charge? You, you plug it on it, plug it into your house. Yeah, if you can wait two days for your yeah. house to charge, the, you know. But he was doing, I mean, that's why he's successful. I mean, you have to decide when you separate the artist from the art or yeah. the, the business guy from the, because, you know, I, I mean, is he a genius? Yeah, he really is. Because mm. I've never met anybody that understands manufacturing the way he does. Oh, wow. I mean, he has every aspect. We were down at SpaceX. Now, three years ago, or maybe four years ago now, that was just a swamp. Two years later, there's rockets going. Mm -hmm. And Neil says to me, well, you know, I want to do, uh, I want to send a rocket to Mars every three days, have a rocket land in Mars. I went, yeah, that's a good idea. But I, I remember what he said about the charging station. I said, how are you going to do that? He goes, oh, let me show you. And he's got a room filled with these rockets, jet engines that, well, bigger than this building. Hundreds of them. Wow. To get ready to go tomorrow. I mean, yep. yeah. yeah. So I, I never underestimate the guy. Is he controversial? Yeah, I guess so. And you know, no matter who you are, you know, Colin Powell was a good friend of mine. And I asked him about running for president. And he says, the greatest day of your life is the day when you announce. The next day, everybody hates you because, <laughs> because half of the people are always going to disagree on whatever you say. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's kind of what happens. It's like the way you're saying about cars, like not every car is for everyone. Right. Pick or, you know, videos about cars, even like you don't have to watch that video. You don't have to comment. Right. Uh, Some people like the Lamborghini Corrado. Other people would rather have the Audi. It's the same V10, except one is acquired and not quite as showy, not quite as flashy, you know. It just all depends what you like. That's yeah. interesting. You know, we uh, we drove a Chinese electric car a couple of days ago right. and there is this kind of looming fear and i know now we have the 100 percent tariff on on chinese vehicles that's yeah. coming in but uh what's your thought on chinese cars coming into america and do you think that's something that uh you know is going to be a shift in the market well competition makes everything better and the reason we have all these things is because there's competition mm. uh, you go to cuba you, you, you people don't even have a personal computer you, you can't have anything I mean, the idea is somebody can make it better, more efficient, they're going to win. Right now, I find a lot of the Chinese stuff is not quite up to spec. Yeah. Um, you know, plus you, you, you have, well, there's all sorts of situations with Chinese made goods and, and, you know, especially with dealing with electronics. So I don't know. We'll see what it is. I mean, we live in a free market. You have the right to buy the best version of whatever you want. When I was a kid in the 50s, my uncle had, a color TV. He was one of those guys that bought everything from me. He had a Cadillac, <laughs> a color TV, an air conditioner in his house. <laughs> I mean, all this kind of stuff, which is like, whoa, here's Americans riding cars with big fins and uh, rock and roll and, yeah. you know, ugh, 15 cent hamburgers. You know, it's hilarious. We had 50% of the world's wealth at that time. Yeah. Right, that's right. World War II. Yeah, that that, that's right. I mean, it, it's, 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 uh, it was a very optimistic period. So you have famously said that you don't buy Ferraris. No, no, I, I like Ferrari. Look, Ferraris are excellent cars. We do them all the time here. Yeah. I just said there was a time when that was the only game in town. And if you wanted the Ferrari model you wanted, well, you had to buy two Mondials first. Or you, it, it's always a, I, I just never liked Then suddenly, like when I bought my Porsche the Carrera GT, the one right over there, Yeah. Uh, they brought it here in a flatbed. Mm. They sent two mechanics to show me how to service it. You know, before it came, they give you a whistle and a pen and pencil set or a jacket. Just 
just something, you know, you just, oh, you, you feel like a customer. Yeah. Same thing with McLaren. McLaren, when I, uh, I got involved with them right at the very beginning, I paid exactly what the sticker was on the car. I didn't have to give the guy 10 grand in an envelope, mm -hmm. a salesman named Ace with a check jacket. You know, <laughs> I didn't have to do any of that. It was like, oh, okay. No, Ferraris are excellent. I mean, uh, I may buy one one day. It's just, I, I just used to get it. And I think anybody in that position would have acted the same. Yeah. It's not even Ferrari so much as the individual dealers. Sure. Because they feel they got you over a barrel, you know. That's yeah. And you don't maybe get the same white glove service as like a Porsche dealership Yeah. Or I something. mean, the main reason I don't have Ferrari is I can't afford all the books. Oh, uh, yeah. it's, you know. But also customer service is kind of the reason that Lamborghini exists. Right. Because uh, Ferruccio Lamborghini came to Enzo saying right, that his cars weren't that great, right. got a bad response from him, right, right. said I could do better That's right, than you. sort of Peter Monteverdi. Ferrari is probably responsible for creating more car companies from pissed off businessmen <laughs> than, than anybody else. So, <laughs> I no, that. I mean, That's they're true. wonderful cars. It's just, it's a, it's a different kind of attitude, you know? Yeah, but no, no, I like them. I think, I find they're pretty amazing. It's, the F40, incredible car. Yeah. So what's it going to take to get you in a Ferrari today? <laughs> well, I would, the one I would, actually, the one I always liked was 66 GTC. Because back oh, yeah. in the 80s, I was looking for a V12 car. David E. Davis was the editor of Classic Car and Driver at the time. And he said, everybody should drive a V12 car at least once in their life. So, oh, I <laughs> so I looked at a Spada for $24,500. Or a GTC Ferrari for twenty eight five, and the four thousand dollar difference is a lot of money back in the early eighties. So I bought the Espada, which is maybe worth a buck and a half now, and the Ferrari's eight hundred thousand. Probably, <laughs> probably should have bought the Ferrari, but I didn't. But but it, it, there was a time when they were just used cars. Yeah, so, I mean, you could get my dad. My my brother brought his bought his Porsche. Uh, Porsche Speedster for eight hundred dollars, oh, and when he was offered twelve hundred dollars for it, my father said, "Sell that for, for God, I want the who I don't know who this idiot is, but he's giving me twelve hundred dollars. Just sell the car." You know? <laughs> so my brother sold the car for twelve hundred. He made he drove for like four years and made four hundred dollars. My father, wow. that's a win. That will, that will never happen again. I just the, the fluke. The guy was yeah. an idiot who you know. So. <laughs> the idea of cars going up in value. When I say fairly recent, yeah, I mean that like within fifty years ago. Duesenberg's were twenty, thirty thousand dollars, mm. and then before World War II, they're eight hundred dollars. Yeah, but a Model T was five dollars, <laughs> so it's all proportional. Yeah, absolutely. You know, on the subject of that Carrera GT, it says right there that you drove this vehicle one hundred fifty six point six zero three miles per hour. You know, they have these phony records they give idiot celebrities. To do. <laughs> <laughs> that's just one of them. Yeah, you're so humble. <laughs> Is that your high score? Well, that's that. That was a, that was that beat the standing record at the time. I see. But is your what is the fastest you've ever driven in any car? Yeah. What's your high score? Oh well, let me see. We went. I went two seventy eight, but I was a oh passenger God. in the jet car. Uh, I remember I went to um, oh when the uh, ZR one, the last generation ZR one, came out before the C eight C seven. Uh, we called up Taj Jukner, who was the chief engineer mm -hmm. for Corvette. And we said, hey, we want to take a, because we, we're trying to do 100, 100 laps and 190 miles an hour with the Porsche. So we said, Let, let's see if we can, let's go, uh, we 200 miles an hour. Here. So I called Chad Shoot. Yeah, we, we got, we got uh, Meadowbrook, the track there at yeah. GM. So, so he, I said, let's do it, you and I. Okay, so I get there and we meet, we talk a little bit. We get in the car. I said, let's get ready to do the lap. I said to him, tell me about the first time you went 200 miles an hour in a car. And he goes, oh, I never have. <laughs> You've never been? He goes, no. So your first time is with a comedian <laughs> who's never been on this track in a car I've never driven before. He goes, hey, I guess so. Well, let's do it. And we did it. And we ran about, I think we averaged 204, but because of the banking, you had to run as high as 212 to keep that average. Okay. So it was about two. But you know something? We were have, at, at 200, we were just having a conversation. Hell yeah. Wow. And it is, like they say, you go 200. And this used to happen at the Indy 500. And when you slow down, they used to have a riding mechanic. And once you go over 100, when you slow down to 30 miles an hour, you think you're going five miles an hour, and the mechanic would jump out and boom, boom, boom. Just, <laughs> just, just break, because they just couldn't. Yeah, it's like the speed needing effect. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. But see, speed is the only new sensation of the 20th century. Oh, There's yeah. no inherent fear of speed. 
if you take a baby in a convertible and go 70 miles an hour and hold the baby up, ah, they laugh and scream because yeah. it's funny. You take a baby and you put him in a room and turn out the lights, he cries. Because mm. I think we have an inherent fear of darkness. Yeah. We don't have an inherent fear of speed because prior to 1900, man never went faster than 12 miles an hour, maybe, or as fast as a horse could run. So speed and flying are probably the two. Yeah, those are, yeah, mm, flying yeah. also. That's another yeah. new sensation. Yeah. But there was, it, it's, it's not ingrained, although there's a fear of height that's ingrained. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of fear, mm -hmm. is there any car in your garage that you're just terrified to drive? <laughs> Well, no, I wouldn't buy a car as terrified to drive. Uh, well, you know, I've got the jet bike. Yeah. Which oh, is yeah. hilarious. <laughs> it's a jet engine on a motorcycle. And Did, didn't you melt someone's bumper yeah, in yeah, traffic? Yeah. Well, well, you have one second of lag off and on. So if you're driving and someone and you quickly shut off the throttle, you're still pulling hard for a full second. If you don't think that's long, Try it. It's like <laughs> full throttle like for an extra second. Yeah. yeah. So you learn to figure, okay, there's, there's a stop sign up there now. I'm going about 100 feet a second. I'll, I'll, I'm going to stop two seconds. So I can, so you have to learn to figure out how to, how to, how to do that, you know? Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, that thing's pretty, you know, every time I ride that bike, I get off of like, ah, thank God. <laughs> you know, it, it's a lot of fun. It is fast and it pulls hard and it's a jet. Yeah, but you know you're so glad when you get off. Oh, okay. May I ask about your alleged beef with Orange County Choppers? No, I, you know, it, no, no, that's that's not. I mean, they're not very good motorcycles. That's yeah, all. I, I I was mad because I it was a bike that was built for me, and it was wired through the tail light, and I hit a bump, tail light popped off and broke, <laughs> the whole engine stopped because. Why would you do that? But the no, was no, I mean, it's, it's, it, it was, it was nothing. You know? So no bad blood between you and no, Tuttle no, senior. Fine. Cool. Beef squashed. No. That's the only <laughs> gotcha journalism we have. For you, Tuttle. <laughs> <laughs> I guess one other question I have, you yeah. know, I think when you get to a point when you have 180, 180 plus vehicles, um, you know, I know you've got doubles of certain vehicles. You've got right. doubles of the Cobra, doubles of the Mira. How do you decide, you know, when a car is worth adding to your garage? Okay, that is what we call a first world problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, obviously, you know, people will say when you look for a car, try to buy the best one. But when you're buying cars of which only three or four exist, you, you just get the only one that you can. Yeah. You know, I mean, the yellow Lamborghini Mira, here's how I got it in the early 80s for free because it was a worn out sports car with a blown engine. Um, you couldn't call the Lamborghini factory unless you spoke Italian. And even then <laughs> to get through, just to get part, there were no parts available. There's no internet. You couldn't search anywhere. Uh, you know, you go to the library and look up the car dealers in your area or something like mm. that. So you couldn't get parts for it. So it's just an old worn out car. And now it's a $2 million. Car. Yeah. Uh, so, I got that one for free. And then in the late eighties, I saw one for sale for, uh, $90,000, which, which was high at the time, but I just bought it because, oh, okay. I, you know, I'm trying to think of if there's anything that's gone crazy like that in your generation cars, cars that it, in the, around 2000. Like, yeah. I mean, you talk about the yeah. Supras. Is, yeah, that's exactly. like the big one. You yeah. Know. Yeah. They are, that's GTRs. Yeah, GTRs are perfect example. Yeah. Half a million dollars now for, right. for yeah, a pristine one, V yeah. spec, you know, and whatnot. So in terms of like, you know, acquiring new cars right now. Yeah. What's what on you, your list? What's on? Yeah. <laughs> I got car number 12 of the GTD. Oh, oh wow. <clears> nice. That's Mustang. on the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't built it yet. Of but course, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like on the way, yeah. you know? Right, right, yeah, yeah. So that I think that'll be an interesting car. Yeah, oh. did you see it rip around the Nürburgring? What did it do? Do we know? Uh, they didn't release numbers yet, yeah. but it sounds amazing. Well, you know, you know, the thing I love about it is, is I, I don't find it a pet peeve, but when manufacturers feel their cars are, and it's probably Volkswagen's fault for this, they always feel they have to come up with a name it's different. It's like yeah. Honda is a great name. Uh, Mr. Honda was an engineer, was it the engineer's engineer. Yeah. Uh, but to sell in America, we have to call it an Acura to put it above a Honda. This idea, <clears throat> like when the Ford GT came out, uh, the first generation 2005, they said, 
nobody's going to pay over $100,000 for Ford. It's ridiculous. Well, if you make a product that's good enough, they'll pay any amount of money for it. Yeah, those are And now the new Ford GT, the last version, which they no longer make, mm. is probably the only modern car to currently appreciate. Uh, Porsches, RSs, and all sure. that, those two. Yeah. But Ford GTs are now a million dollars. They were half a million dollars when they were new. It is a good car. And I love the fact that they didn't come up with some magic name for this Mustang. They called, they're proud of the heritage. So, I mean, I really like that. I like the idea that, uh, that uh, you know, a, a base model can have some cachet. You know, a, a classic example of that, there was a car called the Volkswagen Phaeton. Oh, yeah. yeah. W12, right? At the W12. And they called it, it was a, a big Volkswagen that was fast. Huge bomb. Mm -hmm. Couldn't sell it. Right. What, 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 what do you think it became? It's the the EOS, right? Or what, what was it? No, they became the Bentley. Oh, and then suddenly, same yeah, engine, course, yeah. same car. I yeah. mean, obviously, different badging, make some changes. Oh, and that was okay because Bentley was a premium. So I get why manufacturers do that. But people go, what? A $100,000 Volkswagen with a 12? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> right. but, well, it's not the typical Volkswagen buyer. You know, yeah. you, you've got to educate the, the, to the consumer to what you have. But that's what they did. But I love, the, yeah, I love the fact that it, I like the fact that Mustang is taking on Porsche. I mean, the great thing about America, this is what I love about it, $12 billion company, huge profits, and they're the underdog against little Porsche or little Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, it just makes me laugh that we see ourselves as the underdog. Like that happened during the, in 1966 when Ford won against Ferrari. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ferrari was a company they were going to buy for like five or $10 million. Yes. Yeah. A drop in the bucket there. Okay. And Ford, the underdog, they're flying in spare windshields on 747s to, for the cars. <laughs> I mean, they had unlimited funds yeah, to, they, yeah. you know, to just blow for it. And they, oh, the, that, oh, an American underdog spirit. What are you, uh, hilarious. Coming in with funny. the news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is a good point. Uh, all right. Well, I think we're wrapping up. Uh, thank you so much for gentlemen. Well, thank us. you, gentlemen. Where, yeah. where can our fine viewers find you? Where can they find me? I'm mm -hmm. I'm right here. Actually. Yeah. Uh, well, one well, no, way of Jay Lano's garage, which is on awesome. YouTube, and we, we feature all kinds of cars, which I I which I like. I'm I'm just amazed that people don't value other things and what. Like I, I see some people. We just do ultra ultra high end supercars. Well, I mean, they're okay, but you know, sometimes a Dodge Dart with a four speed and a 383 is a great car. It's a lot of fun. I mean, I, anything that rolls, explodes, makes noise, it doesn't <laughs> even have to explode. It, just, it can be electric, you know? I mean, any sort of personal transportation that moves the bar forward, I, I, I find fascinating. And that's what we try to feature on my show. Heck and yeah. I think you have the same ethos. Uh, we want to make cars approachable for everyone. Right, yeah. Uh, there is no bad car. Uh, you're very approachable. You'll give anyone time at a show and, and well, talk to them. Well, the hard part is explaining what the word ethos means to anybody watching. <laughs> when do I get an ethos? What year? I think that's the new Audi ethos. Yeah, yeah. Audi ethos. It does sound B12, like a car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jay. Gentlemen, I really thank appreciate you. Thank this. You. Right. And appreciate we'll it. see you next week. Thank All you. Right. Thank you.